When I came in 1986, there were four other African-American pastors who were there. All of them were students at New Orleans Seminary, which is five minutes away from the church. And uh, once they finished and got their degrees, they went on to bigger and better things. But well, I'm from New Orleans. I didn't have nowhere else to go. And, uh, and that's how I became Southern Baptist when I started pastoring Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. As a matter of fact, I will never forget during my time of running for SBC president, every media, every person that interviewed me, Dr. Moore, from January when I announced that I was running till up until the convention, every last media, ABC, NBC, Fox News, CNN, uh, Al Jazeera Network, Wall Street Journal, everybody, all of them wanted to know one question. Why does a black man want to be president of a convention that was started as a result of slavery. And to be honest, I told him to be honest with him, when I came to Franklin Avenue, I had no clue about the Southern Baptist Convention's history. I had no idea that this convention was started as a result of slavery. All I knew was that I was a street preacher preaching on the street corners of New Orleans every Saturday, and there was a congregation that wanted me to come off the street corner inside the pulpit. I'd say, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. <laughs> Because I was getting all kind of threats and things like that, you know. You, you think that the more got threats about this uh, summit. You ain't another kind of threats I got about this thing. But I had all kind of threats. People were coming at me, man. When you're preaching on the street corners, and this, this is a tough situation. So I was just excited to be invited uh, to put my name in the hat to be pastor church. So when I came past the Franklin Avenue, that's when I found out about the history of the Southern Baptist Convention. But the thing that drew me more to this convention it's not necessarily all the things that happened in history, but I love the things that this convention was doing. Their love for missions, their love for outreach, their love for people uh, uh, in the community really spoke a lot to me. And when we became an autonomous church, I started pastoring in 86, we became an autonomous church in 1988, several of our older members said, Pastor, let's get out of this convention. And uh, I said, why would you want to do that? Uh, say, because, you know, the history, you know, we, it started as all the slavery. We are our own church now. And I looked at the congregation that I loved, and, and I said, listen, all of us have a history. I've got a history. you got a history. I looked at every one of them in the face. you got a history. I said, folks, there's nothing we can do about our past, mm -hmm. but there's a whole lot we can do about our future. Mm -hmm. And in 1988, I said that, not knowing that one day mm -hmm. I'll be president Wow. of this convention, man, and wow. so uh, it was a, a, a rewarding experience, an honor experience, but, uh, but to grow up in New Orleans, not knowing the history of the Southern Baptist Community, once I found out about it, all I can say, I'm glad I was saved, because it probably would have changed my opinion about this convention, so mm -hmm. it definitely had an impact. And, you know, a lot of folks tend to think, well, racism and segregation and racial injustice, well, that was a Southern thing, right?